Hello everyone, my name is Leo and this video is gonna be super informative. We will compare the Camper Player versus the Tonix pedal. First of all, we will hear the two units in action with the demo song, then we will compare the technical characteristics of the two units with a very detailed comparison chart, then we will share a head-to-head of the two units versus two real tube amps also performing the null test in order to have some numbers to support our research for the best unit to buy. Checking also the behavior of the new Camper liquid profiling tech. Let's start! Let's now compare the technical specifications and features offered by the two units. First of all, we have access to tons of profiles for both the units. Camper, having entered the profile market since many more years compared to IK, offers much more profiles, but the IK platform is growing. Furthermore, neither of the two units offer the possibility to profile amps, but you have a software platform available with the Tonix with which you can overcome the hardware limitation, where with the Camper you have to buy, for instance, a Camper stage. We will investigate the quality of the profiles in the more sound section of this video, also checking out how the new liquid profile technology of Camper performs. Both the units offer the possibility to lower the third-party IRs, 
In terms of patches and presets, the camper offers 10 banks of 5 rigs each, with a total amount of 50 presets, where the Tronix offers 150 presets, distributed in 50 banks of 3 presets each. Let's now talk about the effects and the effect chain management more in general. Camper offers 5 effect blocks, 3 before the amp and cab, including the noise gate inside the input block and two after. The effects before the amp can be only mono, the ones after can be stereo. You can populate each block with whatever effect you want, but we have a pretty big limitation. You cannot put, for instance, a block located before the amp after the amp and the cab. Therefore, you are limited to only two stereo blocks after the cab. With this limitation, you cannot have, for instance, a stereo chorus followed by a stereo delay and then a stereo reverb after the cab, but you can use only two of them at a time. This limitation drives me crazy and please tell me if I have properly understood it or if there is a way to overcome it. Totally, we have more than 110 effects, with 3 noise gates, 21 wah, 11 distortions, 2 boosters, 6 EQ, 2 compressors, 5 choruses, 5 vibes, 2 rotaries, 3 tremolos, 3 phaser, 4 flanger, 1 octave, 24 delays, 21 reverbs. And the quality of the effect is pretty high. On the other hand, the Tonix offers four effects distributed in four blocks. We have one noise gate before the amp, one compressor that can be before or after the amp, one EQ that can be before or after the amp too, and finally a reverb, obviously at the end of the chain. Considering that the compressor and the EQ can be placed before or after the amp, you can see the chain as a six blocks signal chain. Finally, unfortunately, neither of the two units offer an external effect loop. The camper offers only MIDI via USB, but does not have physical MIDI ports that are available in the Tonix. In terms of I.O., they both offer a guitar input, stereo unbalanced output and an headphone out. The camper offers also a mono balanced output. Both the unit offer an input for an external controller. The Tonix has a monochrome screen, which is, I have to say, pretty useful, where the player has no screen. Neither one little screen to show the number of the preset we are using. You can check out the preset you are using while playing only if you have an external USB controller with a display. In terms of ADA conversion and the USB connectivity, the camper offers a 4x4 USB audio interface at 44.1 kHz and 24 bits. I don't know if the converters for just playing are better. If you know, please drop a message in the comment section below. The Tonix has a 44.1 kHz and 24 bit 2x2 channels audio interface, but with 192 kHz and 24 bit converters when we just play. I mean, when we use the analog input and output. Neither of the two units use USB-C and both audio interfaces work at 44.1 kHz. These are two pretty big limitations for me, especially the 44.1 kHz as I typically record at 48. As regards the latency, they are pretty similar. 3.2 milliseconds for the camper and 3 for the Tonix. There are a lot of videos in my channel related to latency and I have also done a deep dive test for the camper. In terms of special features, I would mention that the camper can be controlled with a mobile app via Wi-Fi or with a PC via a computer app connected with the USB. Furthermore, it offers the possibility to stream audio via Bluetooth. Lastly, I would mention the liquid profiling tech introduced by Camper that should allow to maintain the profile faithfully close to the real amp even when changing the parameters used at the time when the profile was done. We will see how it performs in the more sound section of this video, with pretty interesting results, I have to say. On the other hand, the Tonix offers a computer app for creating our own profiles and has a whole ecosystem with a computer app that can be used as a plugin or also with your phone or tablet, which is very nice. The camper is more power hungry and heavier than the Tonix, but I would say that in terms of dimensions and weight, they are pretty similar. And finally, the price. The camper is 700 bucks, where the Tonix is 400. So, 
a pretty big difference here. Summarizing, I would say that the main differences, in my opinion, are with the Tonix you can profile your own amp via the software, where with the Camper you would need, for instance, a Camper stage. The Camper offers much more effects and very nice effects, even if the limitation of only two stereo blocks after the cab drives me crazy. So why so many effects without the possibility to use three just the three of them after the cab? Don't know. The Tronix has physical MIDI ports, where the camper can only be controlled with MIDI over USB or with the app. But you know, when you are playing, using the app is pretty hard as your end are doing other things. The Tronix has a little screen, which is helpful in order not to get lost. The camper offers a 4x4 audio interface, where the Tronix is limited to two channels. And lastly, the price. The Tronix is much cheaper. Please let me know if there are other differences that are important for you or if there are mistakes, so that together we can help other guitarists to make the right choice according to their needs. Let's now jump to the more sound section with some incredible scientific tests that I can't wait to share. Let me now share the tests I have done. First of all, I have profiled a Mesa Boogie Lone Star with some clean settings and a Friedman Pink Taco version 2, pretty distorted. The Lone Star is coupled with a Greenback speaker, an SM57 and a Chandler Germanium, where the Pink Taco has been paired with a Greenback speaker, an SM57 and an API 512 preamplifier. For the camper, I have followed the procedure related to the liquid profiling, therefore selecting the same gain and the EQ of the amp while profiling the amp, and choosing, for instance, a Friedman Brown Eye as reference amp for the Pink Taco. For the Tronix, I have done the profiles using the maximum quality possible. That took me forever, five hours on an M2 Mac Studio Ultra. You guys at IK Multimedia should really optimize your software for the Mac. The first test is gonna be pretty easy and simple, as we will simply hear the units and the real amps with some tracks extracted from the demo song. This is gonna be pretty easy going, and then we will leave space to the numbers. I will explain everything in a couple of seconds. Let's now hear the tracks extracted from the demo song. What do you think? They sound uh, pretty similarly, right? But now let's move to the numeric part of this video. Let me explain the test. How can we compare the obtained profiles versus the real amps in the more scientific way possible? You know that every sound is represented by a waveform, I mean a sinusoid. Well, if you duplicate a waveform, you phase invert it and you play at the same time both the original waveform and its phase inverted counterpart, you obtain silence. Let's try. This is the waveform of a Friedman amp that sounds like this. Let's copy it, phase invert it, and now let's play together both the tracks. Silence. 
In fact, each waveform is the exact opposite of the other one, therefore obtaining a new sound, silence. Now, this is the same Friedman amp profiled with the Tonic software. Applying the same principle, if I play both the tracks together, with one of them phase inverted, the lower the resulting volume is, the better is the fidelity of the profile versus the real amp. And now let's hear the real Friedman and the tonics together with the tonics phase inverted. As I said, the lower is the resulting volume, the higher is the fidelity of the profile. I would measure the resulting volume in integrated LUFS, which value is minus 39.1. Now, I have done this test with the amp and the motors, but also checking out how the units behave, changing the gain knob. I mean, I wanted also to test the effectiveness of the new Kemper liquid profiling technology. In fact, I have not only tested all the units versus the real amp at the same setting with which the profiles were done, but also with half the gain. Of course, in order to make this type of comparisons, I have aligned perfectly the tracks at the sample point level. And I have set all the tracks at the same LUFS. I mean, the tracks are matched in terms of volume. Guys, this test required a lot of time, so please do me a favor, like, subscribe and share. It's free and it means a lot to me. One final note, I will also let you hear both the Tonix plugin and the pedal. In fact, as expected, the performance is different. And now let's see together the results obtained by each of the profiles I have created. Let's start with the camp. Well, minus 26.9. And now the Tonix pedal. We have minus 33.1 LUFS. And now the Tonix plugin. Minus 39.1. The plugin performs better than the pedal, as expected. Here I'm putting each couple, real amp, and profile in line with the other, so that we can visually compare the resulting LUFS and also the graphical EQ representation of the differences between each profile and the real amp. The resulting LUFS are written in the screen and, as I said, the lower is the resulting volume of the profile and its real amp counterpart, played together phase inverted, the better is the profile. Therefore, the Tonix plugin has the higher fidelity followed by the Tonix pedal, and then we have the Camper pedal. Cool, isn't it? <laughs> but I have something even cooler for you. One of the cons of the profiling procedure is that each profile is a detailed picture of an amp with a specific setting. I mean, with a specific value for the gain, the EQ, etc. But if you change the original settings of the profile, the sound starts to differ from the behavior of the real amp. Kemper, with its liquid profiling technology, claims to have solved this problem. Basically, while profiling, you tell the algorithm the original setting of the amp and you also define a reference predefined amp. This should allow the resulting profile to behave like the real amp, even if you change the setting of the profile. Now, I have performed the same aforementioned test, but dividing 
by 2 the gain of the amp. For the initial profile, the gain was at 6, therefore I have recorded once more the amp with the gain at 3, and then I have divided by 2 the gains of the tonics and the camper to check out which unit was better matching the changing tone of the real amp. Well, these are the results I have obtained. Camper with half the volume versus real amp with half the volume, minus 27.8 LUFS. Tonics pedal with half the volume, minus 32.3. Tonics plugin with half the gain volume, minus 36.7. So Camper basically improves its performances, but a little bit, where Tonics is getting worse, but overall, still better than the camper. Very interesting, isn't it? Okay, and now let's jump to the conclusions with my two cent section. Final considerations here, and please notice that these are gonna be my personal opinions, even if corroborated with some scientific tests. You may not agree with me, and this is totally fine. Furthermore, this is a totally independent comparison. I have bought these pedals with my own money and I'm not paid by Camper or IK Multimedia. I make these videos with the joy of sharing my music and trying to improve our beloved guitar community. If you want more info about my motivations, you can check out the video in the card above. With this out of the way, I would say that in terms of sound, the Tonix is better. And even if Camper offers the liquid profile option that allow to maintain the quality of the profiles consistent, even changing the gain or the EQ knobs, nonetheless, it never gets better than Tonix in the null test we have shared in the more sound section of this video. Tonix deteriorate the faithfulness of its profiles when you depart from the original settings, but still maintaining better overall performances than Camper. Furthermore, the profiling procedure of the Tonix, in my opinion, is much more user-friendly. I can use my setup without changing connections or cables, where with the camper stage, for instance, I need to make different connections to make profiles. I would also mention that the Tonic software profiling system allows me to have more consistent results. In fact, the profiling software plays by himself the riffs needed to refine the profiles, where with the camper you have to play your own riffs. And in my experience, you are gonna obtain different results even profiling the same amp. Furthermore, a profiling procedure using software should always win versus another one based on an all-in-one unit, as I don't think that my camper stage has better converters or preamps of my 3000 bucks professional grade audio interface or of my API preamps. In terms of features, I would say that the biggest pros of the Camper versus the Tonix are the much bigger amount of effects that are also very enjoyable. I mean, I like them, but we have the limitation of only the two stereo effects after the cab. That drives me crazy. Then I would mention the 4x4 audio interface and the profiles availability, as the Camper has more profiles also professionally done, even if Tonix is catching up. On the other hand, the Tonix has a physical MIDI in and out, where the Camper has only MIDI via USB. Tonix has a screen, which can be pretty useful, and the ecosystem is generally more extended, with also the mobile app, uh, the software to profile your amps, uh, amplitude, etc. And finally, I would mention the price, as Tonix is much cheaper than Camper. All in all, I would go with the Camper only for the effects section, even if the two only stereo effects limitation after the cab drives me crazy, and would require me to add a stereo reverb after the Camper player to have a chain with a stereo chorus, a stereo delay and a stereo reverb. Let's say that I would add a stereo reverb to the player for 200 bucks, 
this would lead me to a total price of 900 bucks for my Amples solution. On the other hand, with the Tonix, we need to add some external effects, like for instance, ATC Plethora X5, which will bring the total cost of this solution at around 850 bucks. Still a lower price compared to the Camper Player plus River. Finally, one killer feature of the Tonix that I would mention is that you can use the profiles as a plugin in your DO, which is super nice and useful in my opinion and also very user-friendly. So that's all for the today video. I really hope you have enjoyed it as I put a lot of energy and passion in doing it. And if you enjoy, please consider subscribing, liking and sharing. It's free and it would mean a lot to me. Please let me know your precious and valuable opinions in the comment section below so that together we can help other guitarists to make the right choice according to their needs. If you're interested in my Camper profiles or Tonix profiles or my IRs, you can check out the link in the card above or the description below, where there is also a link to a playlist of songs of mine. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon. Bye bye.